coming to you live from Angkasapuri. I'm Rene Fong and this is Updates at Noon. Making our headlines today, secure food and energy security to weather future economic turbulence. New pilot project expedites dentures production. Securing food and energy security and climate change preparedness focusing on just transition and capacity building are among the essential strategies that Malaysia should take to conquer the incoming perfect storm in the global economy. Finance Minister Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul Tengku Abdul Aziz said the country must insulate its food and energy security from rising production and price volatility amid geopolitical conflicts, supply chain disruptions, deglobalization movements and climate change. We need to think bigger and we need to do this faster. Yeah, given the heightened global geopolitical tension, we must seriously consider investing in building a strong ASEAN-wide supply chain, especially for food and energy security. Speaking at the Hazanah Mega Trends Forum 2022, the minister highlighted that Malaysia's consumer price index increased to 4.7% in August 2022, or 3.1% year-to-date, partly due to price hikes in imported components that feed into the agriculture and food industry, like fertilizers and feedstock. However, Tunku Datuk Sri Zafro said inflation remains well anchored despite global cost push pressures, thanks to spare capacity in the economy. Existing price controls and government subsidies amounting to nearly 80 billion ringgit for 2022. Banda Botanic Dental Clinic in Klang Selangor is now in the process of implementing proof of concept POC under the pilot project for the production of dentures using 3D technology. The project, the first of its kind, carried out by the MOH, is to introduce the latest technology in the manufacture of dentures to the dental staff of the MOH and to accelerate the production of dentures. According to Health Minister Kairi Jamaluddin, through this pilot project too, it is expected that production of dentures in the future can be increased from an average of 90 units to 300 units a month at each dental clinic equipped with this 3D technology. Saya kagum dengan projek ini sebab seperti mana yang saya sebutkan tadi, biasanya menunggu denture bagi mereka yang memerlukannya akan mengambil masa lebih daripada dua bulan, mungkin sampai tiga bulan. Tetapi dengan sistem percetakan ataupun teknologi percetakan 3D ini, ia boleh siap dalam tempoh masa tiga jam saja. He added that the project, which began on 15th August, would be implemented until 15th November at two dental health facilities, namely Klinik Pegigian Bandar Botanik and Klinik Pegigian Kuala Lumpur. The Women, Family and Community Development Ministry has set a target ratio of one registered councillor to every 500 people. Minister Datuk Sri Rina Mohamad Harun said as of 31st August, the Board of Councillors recorded a total of 10,136 councillors or one registered councillor to every 3,327 people. Saya melihat uh, keperluan kepada perkhidmatan kaunseling ini uh, amat-amat diperlukan. Kita lihat dalam tempoh dua tahun negara berhadapan dengan pandemik COVID-19 dan kemudian pasca uh, COVID-19 ini, kita lihat ada banyak isu-isu ya, kes-kes yang melibatkan sebenarnya melalui perkhidmatan kaunseling ini, ya, kita, uh, dia dapat juga menyelamatkan jauh seseorang. Syarat untuk menjadi kaunseling daftar, syarat minimum adalah academic qualification. Ya, uh, dia kena ada ada degree dan juga ataupun master dalam bidang kaunseling. Ya. Jadi pertama, khusus-khusus uh, yang ditawarkan universiti-universiti ya, yang di ada FTA dan FTS sekarang kita ada dalam lebih kurang 25 universiti awam dan uh, swasta yang menawarkan khusus-khusus daripada kaunseling. Ya. 
The minister believed that the one councillor to every 500 people ratio can be achieved even though the country's population increases every year. She noted that the ministry will improve the councillor registration process and conduct councillor qualification verification sessions through the online platform. She said the ministry will also go down to the field and organise programmes so that the councillors can register. Bursa Malaysia Berhad said it has recently seen an increase in reports of investment scams, with scammers now found to have misused the Bursa Malaysia name and logo as well as misrepresenting themselves as employees of the exchange. Malaysia has seen a drastic increase in online scams over the last two years during the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the police's Commercial Crimes Investigation Department, a total of 71,833 scams, amounting to more than 5.2 billion ringgit in losses, were reported from 2020 until May 2022. Among the cases reported, 11,875 or 17% were related to loan and investment scams. Given the increasing number of scam cases, Bursa said it is important for investors to have the right investment knowledge and tools in order to make informed decisions and easily identify fraudulent activities. The stock exchange regulator also advised the public to be more vigilant when approached by parties, misrepresenting themselves as having the exchange's endorsement or as its employees and to only follow Bursa Malaysia's official social media channels. This year's Malaysia Cup competition will see the 16 teams involved in a first-round knockout format instead of the previous group stage. The Malaysian Football League, MFL, said this was decided on after taking several factors into consideration, especially the packed calendar and its impact on the tournament. In a statement issued, the MFL also cited the worrying weather condition at the end of this year, which does not give them any space for postponements if necessary for the change in the Malaysia Cup format. As such, the absence of a group stage will give the clubs and MFL more space and time as well as maintain the quality of one of Asia's oldest tournaments, thus reducing the possibility of injuries to players. On the Malaysia Cup schedule, the MFL said that if Kuala Lumpur City FC were to qualify for the final of the Asian Football Confederation AFC Cup. The Malaysia Cup first round matches will be on 25th and 26th October. But should the City Boys fail to reach the AFC Cup final, the Malaysia Cup will first round will be on 21st and 22nd October. KL City FC are scheduled to take on Uzbekistan's Sogdiyona Jizak in the zone final in Jizak tonight. This season's Malaysia Cup first round quarterfinals and semifinals will be held on a home and away basis while the final will be held at a neutral venue on 26 November. Why do we tell you stories? Relevant. New. Efficient. Accurate. Reliable. We bring you extraordinary stories from around the world, from politicians, bankers, and even your favorite celebrities. This and many more on RTM's English News. And that's it from us today. Wrapping up with a reminder of our top secure food and energy security to weather future economic turbulence. Tune in to News at 10, coming up at 10 p.m. on Saluran Brita RTM. Till then, I'm Renee Fong. Stay tuned to TV2 and have a pleasant day.